Hello everyone, my name is Leah Pambewe and welcome to another yet exciting episode of My World Podcast brought to you by Premier Credit Zambia. Remember here on My World Podcast, we discuss all things investments, personal and business finances. We also look at critical economic highlights, but most importantly, we host exemplary guests and also some of those questions that you might have burning in the back of your mind. Today, we are looking at what we can peg as a founder's series. And I've brought you someone who is who needs no introduction, really. So I'm sure you are very much aware of Alluvian as a brand. It's a beauty brand that is synonymous to all things beauty for both men and women. It's an African created and curated brand by a giant. And yes, I know she tries to be humble about it, but I like to consider her as a giant. So we have CEO and founder of Alluvian, Kim, in studio today. Hi, Kim. Hi. <laughs> How are you? A very humble. Yes. Yeah, quite an introduction. Yes. But anyway, thank you. But it's the truth, is it not? Well, yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. <laughs> So, Kim, I know you, we, we've had this conversation back and forth on a number of occasions, yes? And yes, I'll, I'll just take it back. I know I, I introduced you as Kim, but it's Kim Madzianike. Yes, I got it right. That's right. He is, okay. So, Kim, um, you are CEO and founder of one of the most a synonymous brands to beauty in Africa. And you've tried to be humble about it. Yes, I'm going to ambush you and this is how we're going to start the conversation. You're always humble about it. You're always in the background uh, of this particular business. Why is that so? Uh, the thing is, I had very high standards I had set for myself. I really respect the title CEO and founder. So I wanted to gain certain credibility according to my standards. Kind of started out funny. I want to, we should be in business for a certain uh, period. Mm -hmm. I should have a number of uh, products like this. I should have created a certain success stories for my business partners. If I have achieved that, then I would call myself CEO. Okay. So even after meeting all those, the bars kept going up. Look, and you keep attaining it. That's what that's what successful business owners do. So probably I should stay in the corner. No, standing. Listen, we are on my work podcast now. We all know you, <laughs> and everyone that's on the other side of the screen now knows who is behind the giant behind Alluvian. And I'm glad that we're having this conversation today. So can you just tell us just a bit about yourself? Like what makes Kim Kim? Now I, Mio. I think to answer that. To simplify that, I can put it into three three segments about me. There's the personal side. Yes. That's me, me, a person, a daughter, a relative, a friend to some people, and what to be a mother, very passionate mother. Nice. Probably trying to be fun mm -hmm. and all. Mm -hmm. Then there is the other aspect to my Christianity that really stands out very well. I'm a believer. I love Jehovah so much. I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Some they know me knocking on your doors, preaching. Amen. Goes here. Yes. <laughs> That's me. Then the third aspect, which a lot of people know about me, is the business side. Okay. It's all those things, and I, I, I can see you, you, you've properly compartmented them, where they're not overshadowing. You just know at what point Kim is a mom to in this moment, and the business owner in this moment. And I, I won't even go into nitty gritties of how you balance because I don't think you actually get to a point of balancing. You're always working towards balancing, yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. So what inspired you to get into the beauty industry and coming up with this 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 brand that has, I would say, spun out of control in all the right angles, yes. <laughs> and yes, from a third eye perspective, it Alluvian is is doing great. What inspired you to get into the beauty industry? Oh, it may not be one thing, it may be a number of things. Um, first of all, it was just me growing up pushing to be an entrepreneur. I've always seen myself as an entrepreneur from a young age. Didn't know exactly what space I was being to be in, but it's part of that as well. Yeah. Then the other thing is wanting the same balance that we talked about. Yes. Um, I remember praying. Uh, to Jehovah that I wanted to find something that I can do a business that would allow me to control my time freedom yes 
uh, what I was chasing. I wanted time with my family. I wanted time for myself. Yeah. I wanted financial freedom as well. And I wanted time for my spiritual goals. So I was always looking out for something that I could do that would provide me all that. Okay. So that was um, the motivation. And of course, um, it's a good life. A very good life. <laughs> financial freedom, more time with family. But why, why the beauty industry in particular? Why the products that you sell? Uh, obviously, you have to look at the things that you are passionate about as well. So growing up, I was passionate about that. Makeup, I started doing makeup from an early in her bit three or four years or so. And uh, frequencies, it's something that I've always been uh, interested in. And I also realized that I, I have a talent towards uh, those areas as well. And then the opportunity presented itself in that in that area. So it's a combination of things. You're looking for something, so your mind is always open yes. for answers and it all came together. I, I love the fact that you highlighted, I'm looking, I'm like you are deliberately looking for or, or probing what it is that you can go out and, and either nurture and make it bigger. And then it came to you. Yes. And then you match it with your passions and things that you actually love. And I think that's one thing that entrepreneurs have in common. Yeah. I do know that starting a business has its challenges and we won't run away from that. Um, we, we all picture entrepreneurship as this, this venture where you have more time, flexibility or now, and which you've clearly alluded to, but it comes with its own challenges. Most of the times they're heavy. You're up at night at 2 a.m. thinking, what did I get myself into? <laughs> yes. What are some of, or maybe you can highlight some of the major obstacles that you've faced in, in, in launching your business when you launched it and how did you overcome them? I had nothing to miss off. In fact, I'm in mean the negative. <laughs> yeah. So definitely when you're coming from such a background, it's the capital issue. Yes. You can have all these big ideas and everything that you want to do, but where do you get the capital to start uh, the business? So that was one of the, the major things. And how I overcame it is just start off from where I was. Yeah. So it was mostly uh, bootstrapping. Mm -hmm. And that brings a whole lot of other challenges because obviously when you're starting with the investment you thought was enough, it's nowhere close mm -hmm. and what's required. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so capital issues. Mm -hmm. Getting into debt, yes, seeing bro going under all that. Yeah, uh, to have overcome that by just keeping one going and making use of the little. Okay, um, through all this, I'm sure you have like that one pivotal moment in your business that shaped your path as an entrepreneur. Do you want to share that story? Do you have like that one aha? Uh -huh, light bulb moment, <laughs> yes, yes, the lesson that comes with that. Mm. I, th I think it can be, you can always get back up. Yeah. Yeah. You can always get back up if you fall or if you face any challenges. And like I said previously, you're starting with a business with limited capital. Mm -hmm. You are bound to get into debt. Yes. And then things don't work out. Then that's more debt. Yeah. And um, like I also said, the, 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 the plan that you have usually doesn't work. Like with Dilution, the first four years, the plan that uh, well, the, the business model, the business plan never went resulted mm -hmm. in losing everything for a while. Everything. You don't have anything apart from debt. If you know it to get the, the, the money or anything, but uh, I realize that you can get back up. Because now when you look at me and if I was to dive deep into that story, mm -hmm. into the story on its own, you would wonder how then I'm here. So the lesson there is you can get back up, you can pick your pieces, just small little pieces and just make you way No, okay. that's a matter. There is a saying that I always quote if someone knows me, then yeah. a whole carton of sugar was finished by a teaspoon. Every day oh. you're getting a teaspoon. Mm. Before you know it, the 50 kilo is down. Mm. So I was like, if a whole carton can be finished by it, yes. A whole carton can be filled in by a teaspoon. Wow. So if I want to get to this carton, if I don't have the shovels and whatever to fill up my bag, I'm going to use a teaspoon. That is powerful. <laughs> my God. Okay. 
I'm, you know what? I'm going to take three seconds to take that in because <laughs> that is a powerful line. But I'm sure those are lessons. Those, those are lessons that entrepreneurs and business owners out there that are looking at you and saying, if she did it, then I can do it too. And those are the lessons that they need to pick out. But there's, there's, there's something key that you've mentioned there saying, year four, you realize that your business model is not working. And clearly you change and we can evidently see that it's working now. You use a different approach that's working. What is your advice to entrepreneurs that keep going through the same, the same cycle or doing the same thing and it kind of looks like it's not working, but they keep reinvesting more money. They keep doing the same thing. At what point do you stop? At what point do you realize saying, I think this is not working and let me try something else because it's, it's hard. And because entrepreneurs are driven by passion, when do you know when to stop? Yeah. They say insanity is continuing to do the same things, expecting to get different results. Yeah. So as an entrepreneur, uh, you have to always be analyzing situations and always asking the questions why. Mm. This is why then the sleepless nights come in yes. when you're trying to figure out something. So you have to keep on asking, your quest asking questions and analyzing each and every situation that is happening. If you are an analytical person, you are bound to see where you are failing. Yeah. You don't just then give up all because of this. So you try this thing, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You try to find out what it is and mm -hmm. how it that didn't work. You have to really dismantle the whole thing. Yeah. You have to really be critical. Then you find it could be A, B, C, D. Then you say, okay, let me work on fixing A. Mm -hmm. Then see if it's the one. Then let me fix B and you keep going. So what then people lack is the patience because the, the learning curve, the learning curve has to be there. Yes, in, in the school of life. You're yeah. going through the learning curve. Let's say if we are saying learning for a reason, which means yeah. you are studying what's happening and why it's not working. And you have to be brutal and confront your weaknesses. But sometimes you realize maybe you are the problem and you don't want to confront that. And then you want to be justified that, no, you're right. Yeah, we keep on making the same mistakes. So experience and staying focused on your goal will tell you that you have to analyze things. Then keeping on learning will also help you know when to break that cycle. Nice. So it, it's the art of dismantling, really, and being a critical thinker. It's, it's, it's almost like it's a prerequisite as an entrepreneur. Like, like I mentioned earlier, it's a passion thing. So if you're going to put passion up ahead, being realistic, you'll find that you, 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 are, you are being destructive to your own business. Yes, because you don't want to listen even to yourself and to your instincts. More so, you don't want to listen to your business and what your business is trying to tell you, saying, we're suffering here. Can you? Yes. And thank you. Thank you for putting it that way. But let's discuss your, 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 your business model. It's very interesting because I've heard you say this. You call your clients your business partners. It's, 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 it's a very different way. And I, I just want to pick your mind. Why so? Why do you call them business partners? They really are. Um, our business is yes. nothing without them. Yeah. So they have, it's a partnership. Look, we are all really making it work. If I was alone trying to sell uh, a losing products, we wouldn't go as far as we have right now. But when you engage other people and you're working with them, they are equally partners. Yeah. They are not really customers. They are equally partners. We are in it uh, together. And then also our business model is an independence. So before you before you go further, can you just explain at what point? Because I, I do know there's there's your business partner and there's the, there's the end user. Yes. So how does that how does that work? Maybe just for someone that might not be aware. All right. So I look in, uh, mostly we are a business that offers a business opportunity. Uh, uh -huh. So it's less to do with being a cosmetic company than mm -hmm. it is a company that is offering a business opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is we are inviting anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur really, mm -hmm. or anyone who wants to start a business and say, come, we have this product, we have this system that is tried and tested all those down and learning years yes, yes. through we've ironed it out for you come and partner with us so what we're doing is we are offering this business opportunity in a network marketing model mm -hmm. 
so to speak. So anyone who is interested in starting, they come to Alluvion and they are registered as an in Alluvion independent business owner, mm-hmm. which means they are now getting the products uh, at an IBO price, at a dinner price. Okay. Then they go out there and sell in okay. the market. They can also refer others to become business owners as well. Mm-hmm. And once those come, they are also getting benefits of creating uh, teams. So really, they are business partners in the sense that they are independent. They are doing their own thing. They come, order products, go and sell, um, cater for their own, uh, how they are doing it, their own marketing and all. And we're helping each other. I'm a numbers person and I'm sure you actually saw this coming. How many business partners? Around how many business partners do you have registered? (laughs) I want to know. (laughs) All right. Yeah. Um, Those who have registered are over 10,000. Just for Zambia alone. And do you have like a target audience or a preference that you target to in terms of needs? Really, anyone who, from the business side, anyone who wants to start a business. Yeah. And uh, with less risk, with less capital requirements, with less of the challenges Mm -hmm. that we faced when we were starting the brand. Mm -hmm. So anyone who is looking to do a side hustle, and anyone who is willing to gain financial independence, yeah. they can uh, they can come. Anyone willing to do something that gives them money at a time that they can control, yes. that is uh, a business partner to us. Then when it comes to our products, we have products of affluent people, quality. Okay. Yes. So it's um, classic people products, mm-hmm. middle class business opportunity. Nice. Wow. <laughs> so a product for the affluent, business opportunity for the medium income and nice. That's, that's that's really brilliant. But also I do know that your products are priced in in such a way where where whether you are an affluent individual or you're a medium uh, income earner, you can still afford it. So it's almost like providing that feel and equalizer <laughs> yes like how I, I can go out and step in confidence that's good so even your pricing structure cutters for a wider demographic things have to be accessible to to, to to the common person as well yeah they they also deserve to have the best but of course <laughs> but of course we can't run away from the fact that you do have competitors yeah let's talk about the competitive landscape in the beauty industry yeah what sets your products apart from your competition? There is the quality aspect. Mm -hmm. We have some who are competing with us price-wise. Yes. But then we are better in terms of of the quality. Mm -hmm. Then they are like, they are coming with cheaper. Then we also have competition with those that are (laughs) pricing their product so high. Yes. But then we win because we have the same product. Trust me. We have the same. The exact same product. Talk of designer brands. Yes. We are giving you designer quality. I can assure you that. So there we're winning because once someone tries our product, despite looking at, oh, why is it costing this much? Mm -hmm. They will realize that we have good quality. So uh, what we've come to realize is uh, branding is what makes things expensive. Not really the product sometimes. Yeah. So we have eliminated all the other costs associated with branding. Yes. And then we brought the actual product, the actual quality to the people. So people ask us, why are your fragrances in the same bottle and the same box? And yet they are all different. I'm like, sweetie, if we were going to have, we have 100 fragrances. Yes. If we are going to have 100 different bottles, that's small capital. But are you mm-hmm. going to be moving around with your bottle or you're going to move around with the scent? Oh. So it doesn't make sense to be just throwing money, yeah. especially here in Africa. Yeah. Of course, we have to be cooking people in the Western yes. side. Yes. yes, yeah. But we still have a lot of bread to buy. We yeah. still just need simple things as millionaire. Yeah. How are you going to be wasting money on a bottle, a fancy bottle, a fancy box? Mm. But yes, we have to smell good. We mm-hmm. have to look good. Why not concentrate on the actual product rather than only the packaging? Hmm. So that makes us stand out. Yeah. We are bringing you affluent product in a made middle class packaging. Yes. 
at middle class pricing. That is brilliant, yeah. Use that money for investment. Go to Money Acumen and see what you can do with that money you were going to spend. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay. that. I love okay. speak to your financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing is just uh, authenticity. Yeah, I think that's the other thing. Uh, one other thing I can't leave out. Listen, I prayed. You prayed, uh, yes. I think so. Definitely, there is a spiritual candle uh -huh. that is there. Then also, it's something meant for our market. Our uh, it's a network marketing concept. Most network marketing companies that are coming are coming from the Western world. Their compensation plans are curated for them. Mm. And we want to try to make them work here. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. We end up extorting each other. Yes. Uh, for the products that are priced um, unreasonably. Mm. And we will still be the ones to suffer. Stu got his annual bonus and decided to invest it in a side hustle. He took his hard-earned cash and started giving out loans to people he knew and thought he could trust on his own. Weeks later, it was time for people to pay Stu back. But nobody paid him back and Stu lost all his money. Steve, Stu's workmate, also got his bonus and also decided to invest it. But he knew from before that he needed help doing so. Steve heard about Premier Credit's peer-to-peer -peer lending platform, how he could invest in pre-qualified loan applications from people that have proven they could pay back with interest. Weeks later, Steve still has his bonus and is now enjoying the interest payouts. You can invest smart like Steve too. So, be a Steve and not a Stu. Visit premiercredit.co.zm and start investing today. Investments start from as low as 500 kwacha. Terms and conditions apply. So you've done your research. You, 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 you know the, the communities you're living in. You, you know the people you're selling to. And then you come up with a product and a business model that suits the people. Yes. It's almost like you're a listening government. Let's put it that <laughs> Yeah, no. Because I was in there. Yes, you've been there, you've I walked there. Have a, a nice talk thing. Okay. I'll tell you why I represent the same people that are sending the pro. Okay. And, and and I'm sure that's something that motivates you uh, in, in relation to your business, yes. But I, I want to know, if you were to put it in one sentence, what really motivates you about your business? Because you're very passionate about it. I want to pick your mind on that. Hearing how the business is changing their life, how it changed mine from a very humble background mm -hmm. and hearing others being moved up. And it surely stands out as a moment of pride when you sit there. Uh, being then succeeding, mm -hmm. like conviction, what's the most important thing to me. Okay. Um, it, it, it's, it spans out to you empowering the, either the fellow woman or even men that will, will, will come up. And I, I'll i say this to you as an African female founder. That's a very long title, but that's what it is. So it encompasses the fact that not only are you a founder, but then you are a female and also you are a giant in, in terms of the, the entrepreneurship landscape right here in Africa. Does this give you some form of a drive to see other people pursue their own dreams in terms of not, not just your business partners, but also entrepreneurs out there? I'm definitely inspired by other entrepreneurs. Yeah, so you definitely would want to see that. I'll tell you, when, when starting a business, I'll be very honest, yeah. I'm starting when we were starting. By the way, there is my co-director, that's my husband. They run the business together. Um, when starting, the motivation was the finance part. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah. Um, but when you reach a certain level in business, that, that, uh, that motivation is short-lived. It, it goes beyond that because you can only eat so many slices of bread. That's true. <laughs> That's actually very true. It somehow translates to other people, mm -hmm. which is the stage that I have reached. It's no way anything to do with it anyhow. You, when you are starting, yes, you're getting this income, and then you're seeing how the business is helping other people. The model at first is, okay, let's, it will help other people, but it's mostly about, okay, then I'm... Yes, yes, yeah. But you reach a point where 100% it's about these people. When you start hearing those um, true testimonies from people, you see how you are impacting other people 
you are moved to want to get that more mm-hmm. in the home and go this nothing that and in the process you get paid in the process <laughs> you, you get, get paid <laughs> yes it becomes secondary yeah mm-hmm. and also maybe my background was very humble like i said mm-hmm. there are some people and i can tell you mostly just to well we should then swing just that just lifted us up yeah so i have to be that improve for another person Okay. I just have to be, because I keep on wanting to find all the people that are lifting us up. Some, yeah. oh, I can't get in touch with them. So that that thing of wanting to get back to them will move you to look to the next person who can you or can you you can do it. You hear someone talking about how they are failing to do A, B, C, and you resonate. Yeah. The next thing is about that. So I'm looking at all those people that are trusting us and coming to partner with us want to see others succeed and hear their success story. And there are opportunities in Africa for other entrepreneurs. I I say this because you hear, especially young people in Africa, we have this this dependency complex on our governments and complaining and blaming. Don't start me on that. Blaming the economy. (laughs) Go two hours. (laughs) I'm blaming everyone. Like, I like to believe if you can get up and start a business if if premier credit for instance was was started by a female a, a, a female who said i'm going to do something different if money argument started by someone who said i wanted to do something that means there are opportunities out there why in your own words let's put it like two sentences or under 30 seconds so that you don't you don't throw a fit <laughs> why do we have this mentality of they aren't up opportunities why do we think that way you know when you are sort of in a in a dark hole sometimes you don't see the way so probably they honestly don't see the way mm-hmm. which is why it takes us who have come up who have found the way someone is just literally really struggling I remember there was a time we wanted to make it and people say, you must work hard, you must work hard. I'm like, like how exactly? What is working hard? You're not, yeah. you're not really getting it. So maybe they are really ignorant yeah. and we can just help them out. Yeah. Then of course, there are people that are just bought. And those we have to help out, mm-hmm. like a bit of tough love to get away. I've seen that a lot. When, um, I would, when I was growing up, I struggled to get school fees. I think three quarters of the time we were not in school because we haven't ate. Mm. So we were forced to go out there, sell vegetables and like to pay school fees. So when I see someone, then I end up to school. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing is I want to go and say to the mom, hey, what are yeah. you thinking? Yes. Yeah. What have you tried? What are you doing? Yeah. So maybe it's a combination of a lot of things here. Yeah. The culture. Just the ignorance and just maybe someone genuinely not seeing and it takes others to help such. Okay. But okay. I I will I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it there. But what are some of your aspirations for Olivian and do we have any exciting projects or developments that we should be expecting from the brand? Yes. Okay. Having um some more exciting products mm-hmm. coming up so that uh, we are reaching a wider market, making it easier for our business partners uh, to earn and living. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are the things. And then this year, we are going to have the first South and Africa convention, mm-hmm. and it's going to be here in Zambia. Really? On uh, the 2nd of December mm-hmm. at uh, Government Complex. Okay, so okay. we are seeing everyone come like it's a public event, mm-hmm. and then we are going to teach people how to not be pro. <laughs> Very bluntly so. None of us mm. should be pro. Yeah. So we have a solu- solution to those that are that are broke. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that should be discussed. At I, I like to believe a lot of people <laughs> that are just there like, you know what, Kim, I can relate. Uh-huh. Just as long as I come there, you can assure me that I'm I'm coming back with an idea on how I can sort out my situation. Yeah. We'll be posting a lot about it as okay. we go on. On your Alluvian platforms, I, I believe. Okay, okay, perfect. So I, I, I like the fact that you're very deliberate um, with, with with either empowering your business partners, as you call them, having the client in the back of your mind, and also 
looking out for your opportunities. There's something that I've picked out from what you've, you've said. I interact with a lot of um, business founders and business owners, and you would almost hear almost the same feedback saying, you know what, people are just lazy or, or whatnot. But I like the fact that you've taken a different turn and saying there is, there is a, a certain part um, of our population of people that are actually lazy, but then there's some that actually need to realize that this is the space they're in and they need to break out of it. And I think that's where now a lot of people need a lot of sensitization to say, you don't have to wait for a hand, a handout, but then you can actually go out, yes. And someone, someone out there doesn't genuinely know yeah, that they can actually break out and become the first unicorn, one of, one, one of the biggest unicorns, rather not the first, one of the biggest unicorns we've seen uh, so far ever existed in terms of businesses. So yeah, I think more sensitization will be good and people just getting umped to know that there are opportunities in Africa for people to be founders of such brands. Yeah, the thing yeah. is most people don't want to share their past. And I, I hear a lot of stories of entrepreneurs not being honest. Like we only show the beautiful side. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a bed of roses from, from day one. Okay. Um how do you envision and this is us summarizing, how do you envision your business contributing to the beauty industry and in your communities, more importantly for the years to come, if we look at it from a futuristic perspective? Okay, so from a futuristic perspective None of us will be broke. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Straight to the point. None of us will be bro- yeah, Okay. And our beauty will be possible. Uh-huh. Like the high end quality. Perfect. Okay. For individuals, and these are your final words, for individuals or prospective entrepreneurs out there that are looking at starting their own businesses, what advice would you offer? But more importantly, for those that are looking to penetrate borders, you've done this. Yes. Um, what advice would you offer to someone out there? I think the best thing is knowing the end goal. Mm-hmm. Like, well, what are you targeting really? What do you want to be? Most people don't have a clear picture of the end goal, of what it is they even want. Yeah. So you can then get to the point of having that thing if you do not clearly know it like it should be very clear and you can even visualize it so they have to understand their end goal like what it seems that they want to achieve with their business and once they clearly fix the goal or the destination then they look at to where they are right now what do they have and what can they do with the little that they have or wherever they are and just start from there yeah. and then take it just step by step, step by step. So they can start from wherever they are. And also just not focus on on, 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 on the in, on the country or in the country that they're in. Yeah. Because you you are Zimbabwean, yes, you you have penetrated borders. You have let, let's start by the fact that in Zambia alone you have ten thousand business partners, yes. So someone out there might be thinking because this is th- this is a Zambian podcast. Say no, maybe Kim has the home advantage, but then you had to cross borders and make it work in a whole different country and say, listen, it's going to be home for me in a whole different realm. But then I'm going to make business partners here, and I'm going to go into different countries in Southern Africa, and I'm going to duplicate my business model, and it's going to work, and I'm going to master how, or I'm going to do my research on the communities in that particular country. And like you said, as long as you have the end goal in mind, yeah, you find that most of the things are getting they're getting done. And it's a brilliant success story. And we are here, we have some of your products lined up here for proof, just in case <laughs> someone is still there saying, look, is this just another motivation, a conversation about an apparent business owner? But we do have proof. And Alluvian is a household name. Every single person knows what Alluvian is. And I just want to be the first one to tell you that we now know how you look like. We know your face. <laughs> there is no oh, way of hiding, hiding. No <laughs> hiding. You can't hide that you don't want to be called founder or CEO anymore. That is, this is something you should be proud of. And I'm glad and I'm humbled to have you here on My Wolf Podcast to, to share your story and to share your wealth of w- wisdom and experience because it's 
it's an exciting thing to see. And I'm proud to be African and I'm proud to be a woman and to be seated to like next to a giant that's doing exemplary things. So thank you. <laughs> so thank you for joining me today. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you also join us uh, on our event like in December. Because yeah. then oh, that's where we'll share most uh, of the story. So you said the Anuvian Convention, yes, Southern African Convention is being held for the first time here in Zambia. And I like to believe your your concept is doing it in different countries as, as the years come. Yeah. So in December 2nd. So we've had him Madzianike. Yes, I got it right. <laughs> On the My World podcast, she is an exemplary woman who is doing exemplary things. She is founder and CEO Alluvian, and I'm sure that is not a strange name to you. It's in the beauty industry and they're doing beautiful stuff. So you want to follow them on all their socials and also you want to follow Kim on her socials. It's Kim Matianike, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, on her Instagram, her LinkedIn, her Facebook, or her Alluvian pages. So you can just see and tell and follow some of the African giant stories that have ever been told and see if you can start your own. So this is My Wolf Podcast. You can find us on all the podcast uh, platforms and also you can find us on YouTube for the video. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, we are still in the Founders series. Bye-bye.